This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 10, Episode 5, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington on social media, and I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. And we're back <laughs> discussing all things, well, Washington Commanders today, so uh, please hit the share, subscribe, comment, and thanks button. All right, Matt, Washington Commanders got their man, you know, Dan Quinn, new coach, going to be introduced soon. And uh, the world, I don't know, I put up two polls on Twitter and and uh, my YouTube page. It both kind of ran the same way. It was like maybe 20% were good with it, about an equal amount were against it, and about half overall <laughs> said, eh. And I was funny that both polls ended up about the same, so that just shows you fans. I guess haters are going to hate, but uh, if they can wait till the first preseason loss and start booing them, that would be good. At first, my reaction was, <laughs> "You were one of them." <laughs> it. it was very meh, you know, because you think, "Look," and I'll explain this because now that I've had a couple hours to to digest this, Rick, when you first look at it, you know, statistics wise, data wise, Dan Quinn could easily be considered Ron Rivera two zero. I mean, for Christ's sakes, Quinn's head coaching record is 43 and 42 it's about as 500 as you can get <laughs> you know what I, what is he like 501 <laughs> mm -hmm. um it, it's it's very and, and 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 i'll say this i felt very meh because you know we went out and we got the top executive you know and it was with ease it was it seems hey we're going to do two days of interviews and then on the second day you know the white smoke plumes from ashburn and we got uh adam peters who was the high, most highly touted and highly regarded executive available so you you already started out your rebuild on a high note you know and then whether it's the media or agents or whoever i know it wasn't from the team I, I tell you, I think the first thing that Harris did when he got to Ashburn was sprayed and tie all the cracks with uh, spray foam because there ain't a leak coming out of that building anymore. Um, you know, it, you know they don't operate out of that building. That's why. Say again. It, you know, they don't really operate out of the park. Oh, that's you know? true. So that's one reason why this happened. But, you know, realistically, you, you know, you're thinking, okay, everybody's pumping up Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. And then we see what Ben Johnson did against the 49ers in the NFC championship game. And then we kind of saw what he did in the second half and people are kind of thinking, eh, okay, well, we'll still give him a shot, you know, whatever. Um, and then for him to come out while they're mid flight to go talk to him and say, I'm not interested anymore. It kind of just kind of set everything back. And then you're seeing all these dominoes fall, I was kind of like this when when they named, when they announced they were interviewing Raheem Morris. I thought, okay, retread, older guy, sure, motivator of men, leader of men, which is the big buzzword or buzz sentence around all these coaching searches. It's just like you figure first time GM, brand new ownership group, possibly new quarterback within the top two draft picks. Let's go out and get the fresh face. Let's go with the the standard in the NFL right now with the young offensive minded head coach. And then you see the dominoes kind of falling where Johnson stays slow. stays McDonald goes to Seattle. Like you're seeing all these dominoes fall and you're like, you know, what is going on in with Washington? And then for them to come out today and announce, Oh, well, we're going to hire Dan Quinn. At first it looks like a reactionary thing. Like, Oh crap, we've got to get a head coach. Um, and, and the other other side, it's like we got a retread. We got another guy who's this is a defensive minded coach. This is exactly the opposite of what we wanted in Washington. Now that I've had a little bit of time to sit on it, and and I've listened to some things, and you know, I'm I'm okay with it. I'm gonna be okay with it as he fills out his staff. We've already kind of gotten a name or two for defensive coordinator that are coming over from the Cowboys. 
but my main focus is what do you do on the off side, off offensive side of the ball? Let's go back to when he was a head coach in Atlanta. Who was his offensive coordinator? Kyle Shanahan. Who else was on that staff? Matt LaFleur, uh, Mike McDaniel, the whole Shaney tree. You know, you've seen the, the graphic on Facebook and Twitter and everything. The 2013 Redskins coaching roster, five of them are head coaches. Yeah, well, that team finished like four and 12, and then half of them hightailed it out to uh, out to Atlanta with Quinn. So I think the offensive side of the ball with him being a defensive minded guy is going to benefit this new quarterback or however they go, whether they stick with Hal or whether they go with, you know, Jaden Daniels or, or the kid from North Carolina, I have a name or two that I'm interested in. I'm going to hear your thoughts before I talk more about that. But at this point, He's not necessarily Rivera um, because he doesn't have the power. He's going to work with Peters in getting the appropriate players to fit the schemes that they install. Rivera had so much on his plate. Quinn's not going to have all that on his plate. And hell, Quinn's been to a Super Bowl. So, you know, hey, if it works out, it works out. If not, in three years, we'll have a new coach. Yeah, well, it should. first off, that should be a Quinn coaching trade you know he had him after shan yeah. then they all you know, nobody says that but he had that staff too it could be his tree on there they had, the team has not announced the hire yet which means to me he hasn't signed the contract yet right and you do it until you have ink on paper uh that's but it's just perfunctory you know that's what lawyers get paid hours to do mm-hmm. uh, and i think when they got down to the five, I really looked hard at the five guys. And I watched a lot of film of the, how they talked and how they, and their mannerisms and stuff that you don't normally see. It wasn't game film. I'm watching other film. And I said to myself, Ben Johnson does not seem like the confident leader that they're looking for. And good for him for realizing not to step in the wrong spot because it would have just been a disaster and three years later fired. So smart, yeah, he would you know, never get a head coaching job again, probably. <laughs> yeah, the best, he did the smart move there. Then I really thought McDon- McDaniel, I thought McDonald rather, um, McDonald, he was, I, I liked a lot of what I saw with this guy, and especially he had like killer, he had like a killer eyes. I'm thinking this dude, when he's listening to you talk, he's trying to think where he's going to stick the knife. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, this is the ice man you got to watch. I have a feeling he'll do well. But after those two are gone, and I'm not saying they would have gotten it. I think maybe McDaniel, uh, McDonald might have got it, but not, I don't know that Johnson would have. But the next guy on the board had to be Quinn because the other two guys had never been a head coach. And and they seem more of an easier going kind of guy. I mean, they maybe they'd have been fine. I just think this was more of your ready-made commodity. Uh, and so you take him. I heard he won the room, which I said all along, of these five guys, who wins the room? and Because they all got X's and O's. That, mm-hmm. That's not in debate. It's how can this guy get along? You know what? People ask me a lot about uh, Vrabel. Why wasn't he considered? Mostly because he's no, was known for fighting with the GM down there so much. And so Adam Peters was like, don't need this mess. Right. You know, vision. And obviously, you know, that, that cost him a chance. EB, EB just, I heard he had a good interview, but, you know, EB's not ready to be a head coach. He didn't see anybody else go for him. You know, he's going to have to go back and, and re- revamp things. Um, and he maybe can be, but it wasn't here. So, I mean, Quinn was really the guy that made the most sense. And, yeah, I'm sorry, he's almost like Ron and and that. He's a defensive guy. He's in his 50s. But there's so much difference. You have to know the men. You know, you just can't look at the stuff on paper, uh, analytics crap. Yeah. So I, I think they made the best move. How he fills out his staff. I mean, I love people always say, well, can we get this guy for the coordinator and that? This ain't the McDonald's dollar menu. You're not just sitting here picking off the board. You got to let him do what he does. Well, yeah. obviously, they're going to go to connections. He has connections in Dallas, which we have yeah. heard that he intends to hire Joe Witt to be his defensive coordinator, who is the secondary's coach for the for the Cowboys. One name that I, I want to keep an eye on is uh, Clint. Um, what's his last name? <laughs> uh, Did- uh, uh, Clint Didier. <laughs> no, um. The the old damn it I'm spacing on his name but anyway he's the he's like the offensive pass game Kubiak it's Gary Kubiak one of his kids Clint Kubiak um 
keep an eye on him for your offensive coordinator. This is going to be one of the Sean McVay type guys. Uh, I think he's like the passing game coordinator right now for San Francisco. So obviously they can't talk to him because he's playing in the Super Bowl in a week and a half. Um, but anyway, I, I think that 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 would be a key hire for him. Um, you know, like I said, he had the boy wonder in in Kyle Shanahan down in Atlanta. He had a Matt Ryan on an MVP MVP type run that year when they went to the Super Bowl. Um, I don't know. It, it, the offensive filling out the staff is where we're going to see the brass and 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 tax come come to play. But you know, I, I will say this: Dallas's defense stunk when he got there. They were awful. He has turned that Dallas defense into a top five defense in the past three years. And I believe two out of the three years he was there, they have been top five. He's taken guys like Stephen Gilmore, who, you know, was a was a baller up in New England, fell off and turned him into a dang on near a pro bowler this year. You know, he's taken guys like Deron Bland and made him like what the interceptions leader or something like that. I mean, the guy he's he seems to have a way with his players. Maybe it's because he was one. You know, he was a defensive lineman at William and Mary. Um, I really expect this defense. I really kind of wish that he got the chance to have Chase and, well, at least maybe Montez, maybe not Chase, but I wish he still had the opportunity to coach Montez Sweat because I think we could see big things out of Montez uh, under a Dan Quinn led team. But it'll be interesting to see what kind of steps forward Allen and Payne take with this guy because he's going to be very hands-on with the defense, but I also think that he's going to rely on his defensive coordinator because, as you and I both know, the head coaching role is more than just coaching your side of the ball or anything like that. You have to worry about the entire team. Luckily, this year, unlike Rivera, he doesn't have to worry about personnel. He doesn't have to worry about a name change. He doesn't have to worry about an owner group and cheerleaders. Like there's a lot less things that Dan Quinn has to worry about than, than Ron Rivera had to. So like I said, I, I'll, I'll never say a bad word on this show about Ron. He, he endured a lot of stuff. I mean, hell, he even went through cancer while he was the head coach, but um, you know, I, I'm willing to give it a shot. <laughs> I, I have no choice. I guess <laughs> I don't have a say in the matter. <laughs> yeah. One thing people forget Dan Quinn ran the Legion of boom in Seattle. He did. Great secondary that was. And I mean, they went, they won a Super Bowl and then they lost the Super Bowl. But the Legion of Boom had some real personalities on it, like Richard Sermon, you know, Earl, you know, that, that's Chancellor. And to try and contain those guys and focus them long term, that's a hell of a job. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, I know how hard that is. I mean, Gibbs, people thought, think that Gibbs ran some boys choir here when he was here no he didn't he had Rigo in the locker room he had dexter in the locker room he had, he had eight guys he had eight guys in a trailer drinking beer after practice you know <laughs> and he had handled those guys and so you know uh quinn has done a good job with the legion of boom so uh, you know god knows this <laughs> secondary knows about kaboom maybe <laughs> they do the other side of it you know and i and i got a video up tomorrow about players he needs to really work on he's got to figure out what to do with Emmanuel Forbes, mm -hmm. you know, because he was misplaced. He's, he's got a bunch of guys that he has to work at. I would say he has to go to John Allen and say, listen, I know you want to leave, but I'm not going to do what Rivera did and just let Trent walk for whatever pick. I need you here. Well, you like it or not, but really you're my leader. You're the veteran on this team. You're one of the oldest guys. Now you got talent. I need you to be my guy. You tell me, I'm gonna make you team captain. Something get him invested back in this. You know, he's got to find guys like that. I mean, you got to start from scratch here. You don't want to give away one of the few guys you have. You know, even if he's unhappy, he'll, he'll turn it around. Once John Allen sees a commitment to excellence on this team, he'll hang out. And, you know, not every, listen, Chase gets to go chase, he gets to go fight for a Super Bowl ring, even though he's not. No, he doesn't. Nothing. Chase Young's going to be sitting on the bench watching the Super Bowl. Should be because I watched the last game. He made two plays. One where the guy ran right into him. I, I tweeted out, "Welcome to the you know game box, game plan box." And the, and yeah, the the, the box, score box. The other, the other one, he made a decent play, shedding a blocker, went horizontally, got the guy. It was a decent play. Did Wasn't you also good. see the play where the running back ran right past him and he kind of casually trotted to go tackle him? Yeah, he tried to reach out. You know, yeah, I mean, he he went, he stuck his hand out. That was a classic move. So. 
Yeah, Chase, Chase has been exposed to what he is, but he's going to have a ring, and he'll always be, maybe he'll have a ring. We'll see if they win the game. But he can always say, I played in the Super Bowl. Yeah, he didn't deserve it, but whatever. You know. So the one, the one question, we're, we'll go back to the Seattle days. There is a quarterback out there from Seattle that is potentially available via trade. Uh, does Dan Quinn go out and bring in a familiar face of Russell Wilson? You know, that's a guy that Ron Rivera tried to get. No, it's been exposed too much. Plus, he's getting older, too. I, mean, I agree. I agree. I, I would pass on that. Now, if you can get Justin Fields for the second or third that's rumored, I'd make that deal. Because then I'd take that second overall pick and sell it down, you know, halfway down the first round, get myself a couple more players. Because then uh, you have a younger, stronger, faster version of Russell Wilson. Yeah. I mean, I, I, if they're, I don't think Chicago will let him go. But eh, we'll see. They take um, Caleb Williams. They have no choice. Well, yeah. I mean, but maybe they don't go there because I think Caleb Williams is a bust. I like do the, too. The Marcus Russell three years from now will be laughing at that one. So I'm not very confident in Drake May either. I, if I were the Commanders, I would, I would back channel support of those players and talk them up and sucker somebody into taking them. And me move down maybe a couple spots to get Marvin Harrison if he can. Or a tackle or something, but I wouldn't go quarterback. I don't see a quarterback here mm -hmm. that makes go, yes, you got to go for him. Because Sam Howe, who knows? Maybe if you don't make him throw the most passes in the league and you can block for him, he'll at least be decent. You know, I mean, he's better than, you know, the first half of the season, he showed what he could do. Now, you know, I don't expect EB to remain as the offensive coordinator. So I think you, you tell Sam basically, get ready to start this year. And if we bring in a guy like this, then you can fight him in camp. Because not every first round pick gets to start right away either. Right. You know, sometimes. So the other thing I'd say Quinn really needs to do is get the urgency in these offseason works. They did okay with that last year. EB yelled at people a lot. I think it pushed them a little more than normal. But you basically got to push them now, mm -hmm. you know, and say, we're not waiting for any of this crap. You got to come on. So it's something. Now, the, the Super Bowl is just a week away, more or less. San Francisco minus two over Kansas City. The early pick, who do you like? Give me Kansas City. Ah, oh, Jesus. That's who I'm taking to. <clears throat> Rude. All right. Well, I, yeah, I think it's just kind of I, – I don't want to give up on Kansas City after watching them win two games they shouldn't have won. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and, you know, realistically <clears> – <throat> pardon me. Both games that San Francisco has played, they've had to come back from deficits. You know, the other team, a a a, a very inferior Packers team, came back. You know, was was hanging with them, and then a very you know a pretty equal Lions team. Oh, I thought I had to sneeze for a minute. <laughs> a very equal, it seemed, Lions team went up what twenty one to seven on them in the blink of an eye. I mean. You know, granted, San Francisco's defense woke up in the second half and was able to shut down the Lions. But, you know, I, I honestly think, look, you get too far down you, you to Mahomes and company, you, the Chiefs defense will smack you in the face. Like, we saw what they did to Buffalo. We saw what they did last week to the Ravens. They, scored, they held up one of the highest scoring offenses to 10 points. Yeah. Like, yeah. that, that's oh. a hell of an accomplishment. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, the question on the, uh, the, there's a lot of prop bets. We'll talk about some of them next week. But the prop bets, you know, is will Taylor Swift be in the seat for the kickoff? Not in coming through the stadium, not whatever. Yeah. She be, oh, yeah, she'll be there. It'll be close. <laughs> I mean, you can only fly a plane so fast. Well, you gotta, her concert is at like four o'clock the day before in Tokyo. It's a, what, probably a 14 hour flight? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I did this from Osaka back here, and I can tell you, I don't know what the hell is going on, but mm. it took 15 or 17 hours to get back. But you were on a you were on a commercial airliner. <laughs> She's going to be in a nice little private jet. <laughs> I was on the Redskins team plane. Oh. So that is a private big jet. And we were on 777, I think. Do we still uh, have a team plane? Remember Danny used to fly that thing around to pick up all of his coaches? Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking today, do they have a team plane anymore? I don't know. I mean, I know Josh Harris has a plane, but I don't know if they have. They got to get one, and if they don't, but hmm. um, 
Yeah, you know, it's going to be tough for Taylor. I would suppose the headwinds end up being bad that day. I mean, there's only so, there are a few things. Suppose you can't get out of Japan quick enough. There's a lot going on there that, you know, but I'll see, she'll be there by halftime, if nothing else. And then, oh, of she'll course, be there. she'll be there you know, to kick off. Uh, Usher would probably die if she's showing up at halftime. All cameras swing from that show over to Taylor. Uh, you know, yeah. and I hear a lot of people complaining about Taylor Swift. I think they showed her for 25 seconds on yeah. CBS this Sunday, and everybody wants to complain about it. But yet she's brought in something like $330 million in revenue for the NFL. You know, if you think this is a bad thing, y'all are just, you're you're idiots. Yeah, but, I have anyway. a <clears throat> My granddaughter six goes to dance classes. Her big recital tune is going to be one of Taylor's songs about shake, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. And if she knows the Taylor. She actually sat and watched the game with me. Of course, knew nothing of what was going on, but that's oh, okay. She just wanted to see Taylor. Yeah. And well, and she wanted to see the Baltimore team. So she was watching that. I just laughed. To me, I know what they're going to do. Kansas City wins the game. They're all on the field. There's confetti everywhere. Taylor comes over and hugs kelsey and kelsey gets down on a knee and the world stops this and isn't then, the wwe and then you come back and you have the wedding in the stadium I think you could sell out a stadium for this wedding you're really good There's all the taylor files they this isn't a pr stunt it's not the wwe it's not happening rick can you imagine you get a sixty thousand seat stadium or maybe 80 full of swifties then you get married. It's TV time. I'm telling you. And Rick, then Rick, you're more likely to have Jason Kelsey running around the stadium shirtless after Travis wins the Super Bowl. <laughs> and you wait another year and it's Taylor having a baby. Oh, uh, Lord. This is like where the Hallmark Channel this month, my wife watches. It's called Love You Wary. God, do I hate that. <laughs> Every time I hear, it, welcome to Love You Wary. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know? So I, I think the bigger question back to football is, are, is the spotlight going to be too big for Purdy? You know, that's a guy seventh round pick last pick in the draft, Mr. Irrelevant, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, he, he seems to really dink and dunk a lot. Uh, he does throw the long ball when needed. I'm not big on Purdy. Never really have been. Um, is the spotlight too big for him? You know, I mean, you've got McCaffrey, but I feel like McCaffrey looks like he's going through a car wreck every every game at the end of it. He's on the side with the the Thera gun and getting rubbed down by the trainer. Like he's always banged up. And you're going against an opposing quarterback who's been in what three three Super Bowls already in a career. One, two, one. lost one. Yeah, I mean, he's you know that's that's, that's a big one. I mean, you know. Mahomes may end up being like one of the all-time greats just if he retires after winning this one, you know? I mean, I even have my friend here. Oh, I forgot to bring him. Uh, and I want to talk about your friend. Hi, everybody. We're going to win. I, mean, I want to talk about your friend because to kind of back up the Dan Quinn argument, Andy Reid, perfect example. He's in, on his second team. Was he a winner in Philadelphia? Sure. But did he ever win the big one? No. They went to a bunch of NFC championships in a row and got beat. They went to one Super Bowl and lost. He couldn't get over the hump in Philly. He left Philadelphia, moves to Kansas City. Now he's one of the greatest. He's got one of the greatest dynasties in football going on right now. You know, that's 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 another thing that I forgot to mention with the Dan Quinn thing is how many great coaches have we seen not succeed at their first stop? Pete Carroll, Bill Belichick, Bill Par well, Parcells, uh, who uh, Coughlin. I mean, these are guys that didn't do well in their first stops and came back and won Super Bowls. Yeah, I mean, he's – this is probably his weakest team, I think, uh, of the era, and they did a great job bringing back. I think I saw something like it's four players from Kansas City and three from San Francisco uh, from the Super Bowl they met, you know, several years ago. Mm -hmm, 2020. Yeah, and that's four years. In four years, there were only seven players on the field. Yeah. For, look at the roster turnovers of that. You know, from 53 to four and three, you've, you've changed 50 players in three years. I mean, this team's going to, Washington's going to change 50 players this year. Yep. Uh, it just shows you the NFL how much you, you look. It's not like when Gibbs won his three. Yeah, he had three different quarterbacks, but he had the same offensive line. Yeah, you know, pretty much for most of the three. I mean, they, and he had the outstate. He had the stalwarts on defense. 
I mean, yeah, he had, I mean, back then players didn't have free agency when Gibbs did that really. So, you know, he could, you know, he, yeah, he changed a lot of players, but still he had the crux. The Kansas City team is, is basically hardly anybody. Kelsey, Mahomes, a couple other guys. Wow. You know, that's impressive that you can change that many people and still be up top. You know, it's funny to me. I saw something on Twitter a couple weeks ago. I'm not sure who the guy was, but he was verified. I think he was a sports writer or something like that. And they were talking about how uh, Andy Reid or somebody is taking their team to the postseason, like, or to the Super Bowl. So it was something to do, like, with the postseason, like, three three Super Bowls in 10 years or something like that. And he had no idea who Joe Gibbs was. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's just it's remarkable to me, not only because I'm a fan of this team, but the the Redskins were one of the big teams of the 80s, you know, along with San Francisco and and, you know, Dallas of the 90s, like the Redskins were juggernauts with with Gibbs and 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 the, the hogs and the teams that he built. And for for this generation of football fans, just to, what, what do they know him as like a, a grandpa NASCAR owner? I mean, this is one of the greatest coaches of in NFL history, and I'm not saying that just because I'm a Washington football team fan. Well, life goes on. I mean, when I take uh, eighth grade students to Arlington National Cemetery as a tour guide, um, nowadays when we see the eternal flame, John F. Kennedy is just a name to them. They have no connection. Whereas, you know, I remember when Kennedy died. I was really young. But I told the kids, I said, tell your parents and grandparents you came here because it might as well be James Garfield to them. They have no connection. Yeah, but uh, I, I can kind of understand that where, you know, politics is not really a kid's thing. You know, a lot of kids grow up watching sports. Yeah. I don't know. It just it was very perplexing to me to 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 realize that <laughs> this guy who's probably in his mid 20s is a sports reporter, doesn't know who Joe Gibbs was or the accomplishments that he had. I mean, come on, man. Well, just just wait a few more years and you'll get the kids asking you. You were alive in the 20th century? <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, uh, yeah, I mean, I was alive for 40 years in the 20th century. But you, you get that as you get older. It's just, you know, I, I hate it when young women hold doors for me. Hey, Grandpa, I got it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to all of us. All right, we got to get out of here, I guess. Yep. So we'll be back uh, next week and probably a week after that after Super Bowl. And then Matt's tired. He's got to take a break. No, for something. I just can't I get rid of this damn cold. I get rid of it and it comes back. Get rid of it, comes back. There you go. So that's it's um, and that's part of the old man problems. You know, you'll see. Rick, I realized the other day that I st I need to start taking vitamins. Are you forty two now? I'll be forty two in September. That was the year I had my heart attack. <laughs> then I need to lose some weight as well. <laughs> yeah. All right, so yeah, take some vitamins, take probiotics. That's my new thing I'm taking. Uh, I'm not quite there yet. I definitely need to take a multivitamin. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll let you know. I'll let and you maybe, use maybe eat less McDonald's because I'm not trying to have a heart attack at 42. And I haven't had McDonald's in forever. But yeah, yeah, I used to be much bigger and uh, all that. So whatever. All right, we're out of here. I'm Rick Snyder. I'm Matt. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs.